how can I celebrate when I know that this day could have, could have come 18 years ago if the police, who were meant to find my son, my son killers, felt so miserable to do so? For Stephen Lawrence's family, some justice. 18 years after he was stabbed to death, two men are found guilty of his murder. David Norris and Gary Dobson chased the teenager and killed him in a racist attack. Tonight, Stephen's best friend, with him on the night he died, speaks exclusively to London Tonight. I'm happy we have a guilty verdict, but I hope more than ever this inspires the investigating team to work harder to bring the rest of the suspects before jury. Are you guilty of the murder of Stephen Lawrence, Mr Raycourt? So what happened when ITV News tracked down the other suspects in the original police investigation? And... This is what he would want us to do, to um, continue to fight. The legacy Stephen leaves behind. This is London Tonight with Ben Scotchbrook. Good evening to you. 18 years ago, a racist murder was committed at a bus stop in Eltham. Stephen Lawrence was cut down in the prime of his life, killed for one reason alone, the colour of his skin. Today, some justice was finally served at the Old Bailey when two men were found guilty of the teenager's murder. Gary Dobson and David Norris both lied through their trial, but the jury saw through their lies, and now the killers wait to hear how long they'll spend in prison. Tonight, in a special programme, we'll bring you all the reaction to today's verdicts. But first, Ronke Phillips reports on the story she has followed since the day Stephen died. How can I celebrate when my son lies buried? When I cannot see him or speak to him, when will I see him, when I'll see him grow up? and go to university, or get married, or have children. These verdicts will bring, will not bring my son back. After 18 long years of bitter disappointment, countless interviews, rallies, marches, appeals for information, raised hopes and crushed dreams, finally there is justice for Stephen. Neville Lawrence's statement was read by his lawyer. I am therefore full of joy and relief that today, finally, two of my son's killers have been convicted for his murder. They will be sent to prison and forced to face the consequences of their actions. Consequences which my family and I have been living with all these years. The image of the accused which told the world they thought they'd got away with murder. The original suspects, including David Norris and Gary Dobson, strutting out of the public inquiry. The swagger said they were untouchable. Today's result proved them wrong. But the time and effort it has taken means the Lawrence family has paid a high price. It's shocking that it's taken 18 years to come to this point. And it's 18 years in which uh, the Lawrences could have dealt with their grief rather than to deal with struggling for justice. And, and that, I think, is incredibly painful. In the end, it was this tiny spot of blood which would pave the way for the new prosecution. Discovered by scientists reviewing the case in 2008, it had soaked into the collar of Gary Dobson's jacket. The blood spot had a one in a billion chance of not belonging to the dead teenager. The team also found fibres from Dobson's cardigan. It was a significant finding. It's, and I sort of throw a sort of methodical working through the, um, all the items in the case. It's what we're looking for, the significant break for. Norris was trapped by a two millimetre hair from Stephen found on his jeans and other fibres on his sweatshirt. But the defence claimed paper bags used to store exhibits meant the evidence was contaminated. I'm absolutely confident in the conclusions that I came to, which was that in my scientific opinion, there was no realistic possibility for the evidence found to have arisen through contamination. The accused both took the stand, claiming they had alibis and no motive. But the prosecution argued racism was at the heart of the case and showed the jury this secretly filmed video to prove their deep hatred of black people. 
The video also showed their obsession with knives. Stephen Lawrence and his friend Dwayne Brooks were racially abused and ambushed as they stood at this bus stop. Dwayne got away, but Stephen was swallowed up in the attack which lasted 20 seconds. He then somehow managed to get to his feet and ran 200 yards before collapsing. Later, the pathologist said he was surprised at how far Stephen had actually managed to run. The teenager had deep penetrating wounds to the right-hand side of his body and a partially collapsed lung. The pathologist said it was a testament to his sheer physical fitness that he was able to cover the distance he did. Police failures began almost immediately. Several anonymous letters named the suspects, but there were no arrests. The lack of progress led to anger and resentment. If it had been a white boy, they would, have, they would have surrounded the black community. They would have arrested as many black boys as they could. And they would not stop until they get the killer. When lawyers said there wasn't enough evidence to prosecute, the family launched a private prosecution. But the trial collapsed, leaving the suspects to walk free. At the inquest, the five suspects refused to answer questions. The inquest jury ruled Stephen had been unlawfully killed in a completely unprovoked racist attack. Days later, a national newspaper printed their photos, challenging them to sue. They never did. A lifetime after the aspiring architect was killed, two men are beginning sentences for the UK's most notorious race-hate murder. The pain Stephen Lawrence's parents have endured in that time is evident. Their marriage collapsed. And for Doreen Lawrence, the suffering will never truly go away. Knowing others who were there on the night her son was killed remain free. Yeah, there's probably a uh, bit in the back of her head that thinks, I still want to fight. But I think it's going to be a difficult emotion for her to accept. I hope it allows her to move on, because I think she deserves that. Ronke Phillips, London Tonight, The Old Bailey. Well, such is the national significance of this case. Within the past hour, the Prime Minister has issued a statement about today's verdict. He said, in the 19 years since his murder, Stephen Lawrence's family has fought tirelessly for justice. Today's verdict cannot ease the pain of losing a son, but for Doreen and Neville Lawrence, I hope that it brings at least some comfort after their years of struggle. That April night in 1993, Stephen was with his friend, Duane Brooks. He admits he only survived because he was able to run for his life. And just 16 years old at the time, Duane says his life ever since has been shaped by the events of that night. In an exclusive interview with our correspondent, Simon Harris, he recalls the racist nature of the attack. A word of warning, viewers will be shocked by some of the language their killers used. Dwayne Brooks didn't need a jury to tell him why his friend was murdered. He knew because he was there. Stephen Lawrence died because he was black. In an exclusive interview, Dwayne recalled how he and his school friend were discussing which bus to catch home. We were interrupted by a group of white boys on the opposite side of the road who shouted out, what, what, nigger? My response was obviously shock, um, immediate fear. We were in a part of London back then which was dangerous for black people, let alone young black boys um, by themselves. And there was a gang of six white boys on the other side of the road. Um, one began to withdraw a weapon from their trousers. Uh, from then, it was, you know, immediate fear, um, run. You were running for your lives. Well, you know, I wished we both had run for our life. Um, to be honest, I wish we both had ran, but only I had ran, and Stephen had uh, stuck in his position um, and was attacked by a group of white boys, stabbed and died. All I could think about was why, why Steve? Never done anything to anybody, no fights, no argument, yet he'd been murdered because he's black. 
Dwayne Brooks has spent the last 18 years giving his account of what happened in statements, police interviews, court cases and to inquiries. He gave evidence at the Old Bailey as a prosecution witness just hours after his father died. Yet, to begin with, the police doubted his version of events. The treatment was appalling. Um, for me, it was the constant questions around my integrity and Steve's integrity. There was a disbelief that we were innocent. I was even questioned about the words, what, what nigger. Um, senior officers at the station on that night did not believe that was said. And instead were suggesting that it could have been a nickname for Steve that I did not know about. I felt like I was in a battle with the police on that night to convince them that we were innocent. We hadn't done anything wrong. After giving evidence, Dwayne Brooks flew to Jamaica for his father's funeral, but he returned to London just as the trial was ending. For me personally, it's part of closure. Can't be full closure because all the suspects are not found guilty. But I'm happy we have a guilty verdict. But I hope more than ever this inspires the investigating team to work harder to bring the rest of the suspects before jury. What are your thoughts or feelings towards Stephen's killers? They should be in prison. They should be in prison and their parents who have given evidence, um, if they are found to have been lying, should also be sent to prison. 18 years on from the murder of his friend, Dwayne Brooks is a counsellor in Lewisham. He's also a part-time advisor to the police. Today, he says he finds inspiration from fighting injustice. Simon Harris, London Tonight. The thoughts of Dwayne Brooks there. We'll come to the original police investigation into Stephen's murder in a moment. But first, what are those other men who've yet to face a criminal prosecution over the attack? Jamie Acourt, Neil Acourt and Luke Knight have always denied being involved, as Glenn Goodman now reports. In 1999, they sauntered out of the Lawrence Inquiry, convinced they'd got away with murder. But now, David Norris and Gary Dobson have finally been convicted. Luke Knight, Neil Acourt and his brother Jamie Acourt were not on trial, but at the inquiry, all five men were named as prime suspects. Shortly after Stephen Lawrence was killed, Neil Acourt and Luke Knight were charged with murder, but the charges were dropped due to lack of sufficient evidence. Jamie Acourt has never been charged. As teenagers in Eltham, they were notorious. When the five men were interviewed by Martin Bashir on The Tonight programme in 1999, they admitted that they had a reputation. You've got to understand that every council state across the length of Britain has got the little b****s who, who, who break windows, who, I don't know, who um, play knockdown ginger. And were you part of a group of, as you put it, little b****s? And suddenly, his state who played we've, we've, we've never pretended to be angels. We've never pretended to be anyone else but ourselves. So were, were you a group of little <laughs> on the estate? Yeah, rascals, love, lovable rogues. But their misconduct went a lot further than games of knockdown ginger. Jamie Acourt was suspended from Kidbrook School after he was found with a monkey wrench in his bag. The following day, he had a fight outside the school with a black pupil. Acourt was armed with a cosh. I never used the cosh. If anyone's saying that I did use it, they're lying, because I never. No one's seen me use the cosh, because I never used the cosh. I had the cosh in my hand. In May 1992, Jamie Acourt, David Norris and Luke Knight were allegedly involved in the assault of two brothers, one of whom was said to have been stabbed with a butterfly knife. Charges were brought, but subsequently withdrawn. In November 1992, Gary Dobson allegedly threatened a black teenager with a knife. In March 1993, a white man called Stacy Benfield was stabbed in the chest. He claimed David Norris was the attacker and Norris was charged with attempted murder. But David's father Clifford gave Stacy Benfield £2,000. David Norris was acquitted. His father was later found by police with two loaded handguns and an Uzi submachine gun. In the documentary back in 1999, all five men protested their innocence and tried to convey an image of reasonable men who now grown out of their childish racist behaviour. 
But just three years later, David Norris and Neil Acourt were convicted and jailed for a racist attack on a plainclothes black police officer. And in 2010, Gary Dobson was jailed for drug dealing. For the murder of Stephen Lawrence, two men have been convicted. The other three suspects have avoided our recent attempts to speak to them.